orthopedics, sports medicine, and primary care. Join us here for your prescription to better health. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the How to Stay Healthy show for Friday, October 26, 2018. Wow, last Friday in October, so we're really uh, cruising along on this adventure of health. Tonight, we're going to bring back to the show, you'll remember, it's about a month ago, actually, I have the date right here, September 28th, that we had um, this doctor on the program He's an orthopedic surgeon. It's orthopedic surgeon, Dr. George Botello. Last time we got um, into a wide range of orthopedic care that he provides, injury management and treatments uh, for ailments of the wrist, even the hand and upper extremity, shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee. And as I watched a YouTube video of you, doctor, this, this afternoon, from the chin to the toes, Correct. That is correct. So welcome back to the program, Dr. Botello. How are you doing this evening? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Yeah, I got halfway through that YouTube video. That's a good video. Thank it's you very It's very informative much. how Thank you, you decided much. to become a doctor at eight years old and that you really never had doctors in your family, but you just felt like it was always something that early on that you wanted to be a doctor. This was your thing. You wanted to help people. I, I even remember, it, it's a it, funny story, um, I, I'm, I'm almost 60 years old, and when I was young, eight years old, I remember my, my mom telling me that they, they had these elastic covers for pots. They would put these elastic covers over pots before they put them in the refrigerator because they didn't really have saran wrap. Um, they looked kind of like shower hats. And I would get up in the morning and I would go into the kitchen and grab one and put it on my head and kind of play doctor when I was a kid. It was really weird. Nobody understood why. I, you know, it, it's one of those things that... For whatever reason, we, we feel compelled that there's certain things we want to do in life. And I was one of those guys who feels like I, 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 I was, I'm supposed to do what I'm doing. Yeah, That's definitely. Kind of you were born to do it because you treat um, so many different parts of body. Like I said, chin to the toe, but your, your website is injuryandspineinstitute.com. So you do spine surgery as well, which you see um, nowadays you see a lot of orthopedic surgeons and sports medicine specialists. Is like one um, person will be like a hand guy or a gal. One person will be like a knee and shoulder. So um, you really do the whole the full gamut. And you mentioned something there that was interesting, and we're going to get into this this evening. Uh, you, you put it on um, the elastic covering like you were needing to go into a sterile environment because you're already thinking a sterile environment. And I know that's one thing you take um, pride in is um, your office, and we're going to go into that as well. But um, I want to start. Um, so you also do um, the hand and upper extremities as well as the shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee, spine, pretty much everything, like I said, from the chin to the toe. And you were describing on the video on InjuryAndSpineInstitute.com. I'll give another plug there. Um, you're an expert of the musculoskeletal system. Did I say that right? Correct. Musculoskeletal. That's correct. I did yep. my homework tonight. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So is that kind of unique that nowadays a little bit that you, you know, you're kind of treating the whole body? It's not, you see so many people specializing, but you still choose to, you know, treat everything. Yeah. Um, when, when I came out of training, there was the beginning of the drive to go into specialties and going into fellowship programs. The doctor, though, who basically convinced me to go into orthopedic surgery, was an orthopedic surgeon. Um, he has since passed away. And he was a general orthopedic surgeon who practiced in everything. He did all types of orthopedic surgery. And I wanted to emulate him. He was uh, a mentor of mine, and he basically led me into this field. And as I went through my training, I was exposed to every discipline of orthopedic surgery and I wanted to continue that upon coming out of training. And ironically, I first opened a practice in the Florida Keys. And the Florida Keys are a unique geographic area where it's not big enough for specialists. So either you had to do a lot of everything or you would not survive. So I found myself doing just about everything in the Keys. So I continued what I had learned in training through my career and just have continued to do so. I certainly focus on things that I enjoy more and things that, and, and I'm just like everybody else, things that I enjoy less, 
I'm probably not as good at. Therefore, I don't really get too involved in certain things. I'd rather refer to specialists. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I, as you said, I cover from the neck all the way to the feet. And that's a good point. If you know it's something that you're not doing a lot of, you'll you'll take the time to refer to one of your you know peers in absolutely in, in you know orthopedic surgery and sports medicine. Since you mentioned the keys, I was um, looking on your website. So you have three locations right here in Boca Raton. I do Marathon. Yes, in the Florida Keys. Yes. Wow, one of my favorite island in the Florida Keys. I once spent thirty days on Marathon, a whole month. Wow, unbelievable. I love that. Get back to that. I was there for a number of years. It was, it's a great spot. It's like halfway down. That's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. And the way the um, Gulf of Mexico meets the Atlantic Ocean right there under the um, Seven Mile Bridge is I, one of the neatest spots in the world, in my opinion. I, I lived right on the Vaca Cut, which is just north. Nice. And um, what? But very interestingly, I, I love to fish. I love the water. My kids grew up with the water. They both were swimmers. They were fishermen. They had boats when they were young. Um, but what stands out in my mind, you, uh, nobody would normally take this out of the keys, but it's the people. The people, it was a small town. Everybody knew each other. And there was a surgeon who gave me some wonderful advice. He, he said in my very first week of practicing down in the Florida Keys, he said, he said, pick your cases wisely because they will either break you or make you. Mm. And what he meant by that was very simply, if you get into something you're not going to be able to get yourself out of, in a small town I'll never survive because it's a bad reputation. Yeah, word of and mouth back word then. Word of mouth, it, 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 and the keys are famous for word of mouth. And oh, I yeah. still, after 25 years, still go down to the Florida Keys because I'm, I'm cautious not to... I, I, I like to treat people knowing that I will make them better. Definitely. That's most all important. people want. Yeah, and the Keys is like, it's like getting off of the mainland. It's one of the few places in the country where you're really actually off the mainland. And in 1982, they actually seceded from the Union for a day, the Conk Republic. But then they decided to go back, I believe. Yeah, was they, the, yeah they needed interesting the uh, history. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely need the funding. Yep. All those, that, all <laughs> the road there. Definitely, that's the one well, of the key parts. Um, but also, you have locations here in Boca Raton. Yes, absolutely. And still in Orlando as well? I go to Orlando a little bit. Um, okay. My, my focus is here in Boca, where Definitely. I live. I live right here in Boca. This oh, is nice. my home. My wife and I live right here in downtown Boca. Um, so this is my permanent location, permanent residence. Let me give that out since we're talking about it. 9033 Glades Road, Suite D, Boca Raton. Uh, the number is one eight 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 four two four two six eight nine five five. Whether you're in Marathon, Boca Raton, or Orlando, it's eight 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 four two six eight nine five five. The website is injuryandspineinstitute.com, and we're here with Doctor George Botello, orthopedic surgeon. Now, um, take me into like a. So we're mostly on the radio here. We do. We're on live on Facebook too, as well, and 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 we get posted on YouTube. Thanks to All County Healthcare. Dot com so make sure you check them out too there's a whole catalog of shows there uh but what i was getting to is your office you have a different uh, approach in the office it's very non-conventional than what we're used to and i i know some people like this because i think if you're kind of like uh correct me if i'm wrong doctor the term vassal vagal you mm -hmm. probably people who suffer from vassal vagal would probably find your office very comforting because it's it, it's it's not like the sterile um, environment that we're used to. Maybe that is absolutely correct, and we we have to, as physicians, assume one basic fact, and that is, every patient that comes into our office is going to be nervous. They're not coming to us because they feel wonderful. They're coming to us because they have a problem, and nowadays, for many reasons, patients are fearful and hesitate seeing a doctor because I, one, one basic thing is you, you walk into a surgeon's office and they think they're going to need surgery, patients may think they're going to need surgery and they're going to lose time from work and our economy is such that losing time from work is critical for most families nowadays, um, if not nearly everyone. Um, so people are afraid of losing time from work so they avoid going to a doctor. They even worry about these 
crazy deductibles that now exist that didn't exist 10, 15 years ago. And I found so many patients holding back from pursuing medical treatment because they can't afford their deductibles. The other day I had a patient in my office who I, I, I needed to send to therapy, but the patient's copay per therapy session was $90 per session. Wow. People yeah. can't afford that. People are living paycheck to paycheck. It's a good economy, but people are still living paycheck uh, to absolutely. paycheck. Absolutely. So we have adopted a relatively non-conventional approach. It, it began in the Keys, and I bring it here, and that is I have a small office, and I have few people in my office. And everybody knows who those people are, so they could always reach somebody, not just an operator, not just an answering machine. Um, I, I have an exam table in my office, but I prefer not to use it normally. I like to sit with my patients as though each of my exam rooms was a consultation room, not an exam room. Patients are not coming to me for an exam. They're coming to me for a diagnosis and a treatment plan. They want to know that I can relate to them and they to me. So I like to sit at their level. I don't want to look down at them. I don't want to talk down to them. I don't want to talk like I'm a doctor. I want to talk to them as though I'm a peer to them. I want to be on their same level. Um, sometimes, I, one day I, I found myself speaking to a nurse practitioner in my office about her neck and her requiring surgery, and I was talking to her very simplistically, very straightforward. And ultimately, I got to asking her, well, what do you do for work? Because there's going to be some downtime. And she told me then she was a nurse practitioner. And I had to apologize because I was talking beneath her. And they didn't even realize that. And she actually appreciated it because most doctors are not that way. I find myself all the time when patients come in wanting them to bring in a CD with any x-rays or MRIs, whether they're new or old because I need that to make a decision as to what the patient needs. I don't need a report from another doctor who sees it through a different shade of glasses, perhaps. I want to see it myself because I am ultimately responsible for the decision to treat that patient. But when I look at the MRI or the x-ray, I put it on my computer as a laptop, and I sit next to the patient, or in between, husband and wife, and I show them their MRIs, their x-rays, so they see what I'm explaining. A picture paints a thousand words. So why not show that picture to the patient so I can save so much verbiage, so much time, and they understand it better. So it's a very non-conventional approach. We like all of our patients to kind of get to know us and not fear our office or our office setting. They see your point of view. Ah. And that's important. Yeah. Because, um, you know, some of these procedures are very complex. I mean, you do spine fusion, some spine surgery. But that said, um, knowing, you know, getting the um, understanding and being comfortable with your doctor, you can learn a lot about, you know, what's going to be done. And I just want to make a point that Dr. Batello, we were talking before we went on, it's not all, always about surgery with you. You, I mean, in most cases, a non-surgical approach, you'll, you'll offer a non-surgical approach if it's something that you'll feel that maybe we could try first without surgery. Well, most, most patients come to me because of the orthopedic aspect, not the surgical aspect. And there are some who have been worked up and they've been told that they need surgery and they'll come to me for a second opinion or they'll come to me because of the website, they'll come to me because of a, a, a referral or, or word of mouth. But not every surgery that a patient is told they need is what I would recommend either. Each doctor has his own opinion. Uh, uh, maybe a month ago, I saw a patient um, in the Keys I had operated on his back perhaps seven years ago. He came back because he started having problems years later. And I gave him my opinion of what he needed. He, I was not in his insurance network, so he went to somebody in his insurance network. And that doctor had recommended a fairly formidable procedure that would take him a long time to recover from. And when I reviewed his MRIs with him, <coughs> I thought he needed a far less invasive procedure, nonetheless a procedure, but far less invasive that I believe he would have a lot better outcome with significantly less downtime as opposed to six months of healing. For all intents and purposes, it would be two to four weeks, and that's all. And I recommended him to another doctor in his network for that procedure because, again, I wasn't in his network. 
but he still came to me for my opinion and my direction. That's and, good to know. Yeah, and we talked him, in a way, out of having something major. Well, Dr. Patel, thank you for that info. Hold that thought, though. We're going to take a quick break, and on the other side, we're going to talk about a stem cell therapy, something we talked about last time, but I would definitely want the explanation again on the How to Stay Healthy show. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. Hi, I'm Deanna Barron, RN, with All County Health Care. You know how I know that I've done a good job? We say goodbye. After you understand the medications you take, once you know that gaining two pounds in a day means you should call the doctor, when your wound is healed, when you can use your nebulizer all by yourself, when the goals that you and your all-county health care team of nurses, therapists, and aides established are met, we say goodbye. Very nice to meet you, and I hope I never see you again. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. And now back to How to Stay Healthy, your weekly doctor's interview and prescription to better health. Welcome back to the program. Uh, like Once again, like I said, sponsored by All County Healthcare, allcountyhealthcare.com. You can see all the shows on their website, allcountyhealthcare.com, or the their Facebook page has a whole catalog of all the shows uh, on Facebook as well. So just type in All County Healthcare in the browser bar and tomorrow all county healthcare is proudly supporting the strides against breast making strides i'm sorry the stride the twice i got it wrong let's start again all county healthcare is proudly supporting the making strides against breast cancer broward walk and fundraiser tomorrow morning in downtown fort lauderdale starting at 8 30 a.m so um, if you have a chance, I know we broadcast in well into Broward County and Fort Lauderdale area. Stop by and uh, say hello to All County Healthcare at their booth and support Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, the Broward Walk and Fundraiser as well. And if I could make a couple of quick plugs, um, what a phenomenal cause, breast cancer. They've made such wonderful strides, and there's so much better awareness for breast cancer. And their survivorship is getting so much better so much in part because of all the philanthropy and all the volunteer work and everything that's being contributed. So go for it. I think that's a wonderful cause. And I also want to make a, a quick plug to all county as well. I just took care of a complex uh, hip replacement patient. And when I saw him in the office only 15 days post-op, he was doing remarkably well. And granted, it's part patient, it is part surgeon, but we can't ignore the fact that it's the therapists and the home care and the nursing, et cetera, all of which are being provided at, at, at the most uh, sensational level by all counties. So I have to say good words for them as well. And I've heard nothing but the best about them as well. And um, just like you said, uh, the, the therapists and the home care, because you can give the orders as a doctor, but you can't be there all the time. Even with an established practice like yourself, you can't be there all the time. No, you can't. You need and someone to follow those orders and help you out. And a great example is Old County gave me a buzz um, on my, my phone a, a few days after the surgery because the patient was having an issue. And that's fantastic because you have a nurse that's assessing it, reaching out to the doctor, and addressing that issue right away as opposed to patients who don't know when to call, don't know if they want to bother the doctor, and don't know when it's important. So in situations like that, it's spectacular and great health care. Yep, great health care. And they have the nurses on staff there. You bet. Um, so check out Dr. George Botello as well on InjuryAndSpineInstitute.com. 
Um, so Dr. Batella, like I said, he treats from the chin to the toes. We're talking sprains, broken bones, uh, joint replacement surgery, with which you've known about. He uh, gets into a little bro of robotic surgery and arthroscopic surgery, which are, are terms that you listen to the show you're probably uh, very well aware of. And um, But I want to ask you, um, are you a um, board-certified orthopedic surgeon? Sure am. Oh, nice. Yep, I've been board-certified, actually, fortunately, all my career. Good to know. Yeah, I, in fact, um, had the opportunity, having met the requirements for board recertification, um, I took my boards uh, three years early and passed, and therefore, I'm now board-certified into the year 2029. Oh, congratulations. So that's a big big wow. plug too that is great That's great nice. news i'm glad we could um you know let everyone know about that um, another reason i wanted to have you back on the program i always like to talk about this because it's the latest and greatest in health and that's what we tried to bring on this show that was why we always bring you surgeons and primary care doctors you know any doctors is welcome on the program but um stem cell therapy now um is that for a non-surgical approach to ailments of um, any ailments like wrist, shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee, or is that something that is given after surgery? Um, that, that's actually a great question. Um, there is so much buzz out there right now with regards to stem cell therapy. There's so much buzz. Uh, there's so many. There, there's so many things that are now available under a term called cellular biologics. There, there. It's biologic therapy that we're now using to enhance healing. Okay, not to create healing, but to enhance healing. Um, so, once we realize that, that these things are used to enhance healing, it, it goes back to one basic premise. If you have an injury that is capable of healing, then it does great with these cellular biologics. And what I mean by cellular biologics, we talked about it the last time, we're talking about stem cells, we're talking about platelet-rich plasma, we're talking about platelet-poor plasma, we're talking about embryonic uh, tissue, it goes on and on and on. But you need an environment for the injury to heal. So, example, patient comes in and they have advanced arthritis involving their knee. Stem cell therapy doesn't help them. Why? Well, it's, it's, it's a cell or, or cellular element that needs the environment to be able to heal. So you have advanced arthritis. The person is already bone on bone. They don't have any cartilage. It's foolish to believe that you can inject them with stem cells and they're going to grow their cartilage just like that. This is not a miracle of medicine. Um, it's a tool of medicine. So in a case like that, where patients have later stage arthritis, those cases do great with what we call platelet-rich plasma. Again, it's a cellular element from the, own, their own, the patient themselves. And the plasma is rich in proteins that diminish inflammation and help with healing. So you decrease the inflammation and the pain, even though you cannot change the progress of the arthritis. You may be able to slow it somewhat, but... You, you can't slow it to the point unless you put the patients in special braces and put them up on crutches or, or, or take weight off of their legs. Otherwise, how will the cartilage even grow back with stem cells? Um, on the other hand, if you have a patient, let's say, with a meniscus tear and they're younger, and the surgeon goes in, puts in a scope, and repairs their meniscus, well, that's a great environment to inject stem cells. Why? Because now you're adding the extracellular elements where something has now been enabled to heal. We've now sutured the meniscus back together again, and now the cellular elements could do the healing. But that patient also needs to be put on crutches and need to be braced. It, it, you can't change the fact that the body needs to heal at a certain rate just by adding something to it, like stem cells. So that's one of the big problems now, that people are exposed to this, this term, stem cells, and we want to try it. Why? Because we want to decrease the chances of us needing surgery. But you have to treat it, if you, if you have an athlete, a younger athlete who puts a lot of wear and tear on his knees, that's a better case where you might want to consider stem cells, especially if they do have an injury, a, a, a professional athlete, an NFL player, etc. You might help to buy some time along with PRP on their knees as opposed to dealing with the end stage years later without treatment. So it's almost as though you're using some of the 
other agents that have existed for years, anti-inflammatories and things like that, except you put them on super steroid, mm -hmm. okay? But it's not a steroid at all. Steroids are not, they are naturally occurring, but they're not healthy for the body. To take a patient with PRP and avoid the gastric mm -hmm. effects, um, et cetera, it, it's just a much better use of um, an agent, and hence the use of cellular biologics. Uh, I'm taking away from that, and it, it can help to enhance the healing is one Absolutely. of the first things yes. that you said. Okay, but it's not a no-all, end-all there as well. Um, enhance the healing. That's what stem cell therapy can do. And um, now, our stem cells, we got about two minutes, but stem cells are harvested from the individual patient, or can they come from a um, anyone? Um, they they are known to come from just about anyone or or even from um, umbilical cords. The only problem is they are cells, and mm -hmm. they are living cells. And living cells can only withstand the environment of of no oxygenation and no nutrition for a period of time. And if you freeze a cell, a cell dies. So believe it or not, taking a stem cell from somewhere else and storing it and trying to save it for a later time defeats the purpose of the cell the cell I didn't will know die. That. yeah yeah well, we only have about a minute and um that different than prp because prp is blood so it's got to be taken from mostly an end the same individual well the prp is largely without cells and okay therefore those elements can last longer because they're proteins and those proteins will continue to have their effect for a longer period of time i see well thank you again for all this great info on on orthopedics Thank you. It's really always a great, it's always a pleasure talking to you on these subjects. It's Dr. George Botello, InjuryInstituteInstitute.com, 888-426-8955. Check him out in Boca, his home office, or if you have friends and family in uh, Marathon, beautiful Marathon, beautiful Orlando. Love Orlando, too. And he's on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Check it out. And we'll see you next time on the How to Stay Healthy Show. Thank you. For a prescription to better health from the top doctors in the medical fields of cardiology, neurology, orthopedics, sports medicine, and primary care, join us each week on the How to Stay Healthy Show. The opinions